Hi team, welcome to this video. Here we're going to be talking about adding disbursements or contractor fees onto our jobs in Zero Practice Manager. So we have the ability to add time and our time is added onto our tasks within our jobs but if there's anything that's non-time related we still want to capture the corresponding cost on our jobs. An example could be travel, it could be postage or it could be a subcontractor who's helped us out deliver the work. So regardless of what that is, anything that is not time related, we add as costs on the job. So the question now becomes, what markup do we put on this? So generally for anything like travel or uh, sub, oh, sorry, for anything like travel or postage, you might have a default markup that you put, it might be 20 or 30% as a bit of a handling fee. But the real challenge is around how do we cost our subcontractors? So if we're using an outsourced service provider, the question is do we put it in a cost or do we put it in a three times or a four times markup? Generally, if we're putting it in at, a, at, a, at cost, it means that we're gonna recognize a big write-up on our job. Because you gotta think, if we have $5,000 of revenue on a job, when we do a whip wash up, that revenue is going to be apportioned first to the costs on the job, and then the remaining is gonna be apportioned to the time on that job. So if we have lower billable than we have uh, invoiced, that means we're gonna have a write-up, where if our billable was higher, then our invoiced, we're gonna have a write-off, and those write-offs are gonna be recognized against your staff. So you wanna have a good think about what margin we wanna put on that. So if we put, if we have a subcontractor invoice for $500, we might wanna put it in billable at 500, which would mean that we're going to have a lot more revenue to allocate to the timesheet entries. Where if we put it on at a 300% markup, so it's at $1,500, that means of that $5,000 of invoiced, the first 1,500 gets apportioned to that subcontractor, and the remaining 3,500 is apportioned over those timesheets. So as you can see, what markup you put on your subcontractors has a huge impact on the write-ups or the write-ups for recognizing for each staff member. So you wanna give that some thought. Generally, we look at putting a, no, a zero markup on there if you want to be recognizing write-ups on your staff, if you want that are, that, are, that are outsourcing their work, or if you want to look at keeping it consistent with the markup we expect to see on our staff, you'd want to put a 300% markup. So a $500 cost, you'll put in at a $1,500 billable amount. So that's a discussion that you want to have in your practice about what your markup is on these subcontractors. But what I'm going to take you through here is just simply how we put those through onto our jobs. So let's jump in and we'll check it out. So here I am in my uh, job here. So to add a subcontractor fee, very simple, just come into costs. And then I'm going to put it in here so I can put in subcontractor. You might, you might have a... Uh, a a predefined uh, cost in the system. It could be the outsource office that you use. So if we're gonna put it in here at cost, we're just gonna pop it in like that at three, 500. So what that means, if I put it in like this, is we have a $500 billable whip based on, so I've got an invoice in here, as you can see, we've got an $1,800 invoice, and we've got a $500 cost for our, or, or billable amount for our subcontractor. Well, what I can also do, come back in here, if I click on the date, it's gonna bring it back up here. I might wanna put it in a 300% markup. And now what you'll see here is we've got a $1,500 uh, billable whip on this. So what's gonna happen when we do a whip wash up is it's going to apportion this $1,800 firstly to this 1,500 and then the remaining gets apportioned to the time on the job. So if we put it in at 500, we've got a lot more revenue to apportion to our staff's timesheets. Uh, therefore, we're gonna, it's gonna have a huge impact on your write-ups and write-offs. So it is really important to have a chat uh, amongst yourselves and understand what sort of markup you wanna put on your subcontractors. So there's options there again is putting zero markup, so you put it in at cost. When you do that, you're gonna expect to see write-ups on a lot of your jobs. If you put it in at a 300% at a markup, that's gonna to align to what our expected ROIs at a staff member level are, and then it's gonna be pretty consistent uh, with what you'd expect to see in terms of write-ups and write-offs. So yeah, have a good chat and make a decision amongst yourselves, but uh, that is how you enter them as uh, disbursements. Hope that all makes sense. Let us know if you have any questions in the chat, and I'll see you in the next video.